Is DaVinci Resolve changing your color grading when you export? Today, we're going to fix that issue. What is up, you guys? I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my channel. I'm Tony Fuentes. If you don't know who I am, I post tutorials on video and photo editing. So if you like those things, consider subscribing. Okay, so today we're going to fix this issue that occurs sometimes on Mac and sometimes rare cases also on Windows. So this happens when maybe you spend hours color grading your video, nailing down the colors and the contrast, then you hit export. I noticed that the final result, the exported video, doesn't look quite the same as the video that you had in program. So maybe it's a bit more exposed, a bit more washed out, and it's a bit desaturated. So today we're going to fix this. So before we jump into the settings that we need to adjust to correct this error within DaVinci Resolve, but also our display, we need to understand color spaces. Now, a color space in general terms is a range of possible colors that can be reproduced. Some displays or some media can reproduce certain types of colors in terms of variety of hue and variety of luminance, and some others are a bit more, a bit smaller. Some color spaces are very big and very wide. This is uh, similar to dynamic range. Some cameras can reproduce the colors that we're seeing in 10-bit. Some others can reproduce it in 8-bit, 15-bit. It all depends on the dynamic range. So what I need you guys to understand about color spaces is that you need to identify which color space you have to export your video to. So for example, if you're exporting your video for TV or for YouTube, for social media, uh, videos that are going to be reproduced in all types of screens, I would suggest that you use Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 color space. Other color spaces could be sRGB. Some movies or some directors may um, ask you to export your video in a specific color space like P3 DCI or ST something or RE color space or anything like that. It all depends on where your video is going to be broadcasted. So for example, myself, I export most of my videos for YouTube, social media, uh, videos that are gonna be viewed on screens like your phone, like your PC, like your TV, all of them. So I recommend Rec. 709. That's the color space that I need to export my video. So investigate which color space you need to export your video and memorize it because we're gonna introduce it into the image result further along. Okay, so step one is the calibration on our monitor. This step is very important for any professional colorist, not so much for us guys who are a bit more amateurs, but if you're looking to have the greatest fidelity in terms of colors, you need to set your monitor or calibrate it to the specific color space that you're gonna export your video. Right here, you can notice that I have the studio display and I have the preset for Rec. 709. Why? Because I'm exporting my videos for YouTube. So allowing me to have my preset in Rec. 709 will allow me to see how the video is gonna look in YouTube once it's processed by YouTube's algorithms. Now, the ideal thing would be to calibrate manually with a professional my display so it's 100% correct. But right now, I'm okay with just using the preset that comes along with the studio display. So it's important to have your monitor calibrated to the color space that you're gonna export your video so you can see the colors that the viewers are gonna eventually see in the final result. Okay, now into the settings that we have to adjust within DaVinci Resolve. The second step is using color management. Now, this tool is supremely powerful. I find that most of the problems that come with the change of the color shift or the exposure shift when you export a video comes down to two factors. One, either people are not using color management and two, maybe you are using color management correctly, but you're on Mac. So we're gonna sol solve these two issues right now. So to activate color management, we're gonna go into our settings down here and we're gonna select color management. And this is the screen that we are gonna see if you just opened up the program and DaVinci Resolve isn't managing your colors. So what we're gonna do is in color science, select YRGB DaVinci Resolve color management. We're gonna deselect the automatic color management and we're gonna select over here, custom. Here in custom, we have all the options to alter our values. Now, here we have input color space, timeline color space, and we have output color space. Remember that uh, previously in the video, I told you to investigate or to find out which color space you need to export your video in order for the colors to be correct. So here you can select it in output color space. In my case, by default, it comes in Rec. 9 scene. For me, for YouTube, I like to use in Windows, Rec. 9 2.4, but in Mac in particular, I like to use Rec. 9 a Now, Rec. 9 a is just a little variant created for Mac users in particular because uh, the way that the GPU processes the colors within Mac, it creates a slight tone shift. So by using Rec. 9 a I'm really making sure that the colors are gonna be just like I'm seeing them in the program. Now, this is very important, guys. It works for Windows, it works for Mac as well. Uh, for Windows, I would use Rec. 9 2.4 for YouTube in particular, but you need to use color management in order to 
know what color space your video is going to be exported to. I want you guys to pay attention to the video in the background. Notice the contrast, notice the saturation. And once I've selected the output color space as Rex A, I'm going to select save. And notice how it changed the exposure and the contrast. Now my video is basically how I would, it would look when I export it. Now that we've selected our correct output color space, we can start our color grading process and start moving the sliders, adding some colors, LUTs, FX, anything like that. So I always recommend you guys to start off your color grading. Well, before you start color grading, use color management and set the settings correctly. Also, another setting that I have to change in particular for Mac users is go into your preferences of DaVinci Resolve up here. And you're going to go into system and into general. Now over here, I want you to mark automatically tag Rec 709 clips as Rec 709A. This will automatically just tell DaVinci Resolve that your Rec 709 clips are going to be converted into Rec 709A. Just give it a heads up. So just select that and you're basically good to go. Output color space is the important factor. It all depends where you're exporting your video. Me, I'm exporting for YouTube, so I use Rec 709A, particularly because I'm in Mac. But if I was in Windows, I would use Rec 709 2.4. Okay, so now that the video has been rendered, this is the in-app look. This is how it looks. And we take a look at the final result and it's the same. There's no shift in terms of contrast. There's no shift in terms of saturation. Let's see it in a bigger scale. This is the clip within DaVinci Resolve. And this is the clip once we export it and we've basically have the same exposure, the same saturation. We've corrected that error that occurs when you're not using color management. Now, there are other two values in color management that I want to explain. They're unrelated to this tutorial, which are input color space and timeline color space. Now, input color space, you're basically telling DaVinci Resolve what type of video is processing. So, for example, um, if you look up over here, most of my clips, well, some are drone shots, but the others are shot with a Sony camera. I noticed that it's in S-Log3, S-Gamma 3.Cine. So, a great way to convert these log files into Rec 709A. I'm going to select over here in input color space. I'm going to go all the way down to S-Gamma 3.Cine going to select it and notice how immediately it changes it into Rec 709A. It converts our clips in a logical manner, in a precise manner, into the output color space without me having to add any nodes, any LUTs or correct it manually. Now, where does timeline color space come in? Timeline color space is basically what you're working with. Here, I would suggest to you uh, to use the widest color space that you can use so you have a bit more flexibility. You can use Rec 09, but it's a bit smaller. So I always like to use timeline color space as uh, DaVinci Resolve's wide uh, gamut intermediate over here. And you're working with a broader color space that will allow you to be a bit more flexible, in particular, if you have clips from different cameras with different dynamic ranges. So that's how you fix the tone and exposure shift that occurs when exporting a video within DaVinci Resolve. Remember to use color management is the most important part of this and to know your output color space, where is your video gonna be reproduced? Also, if you're on Mac, remember to use Rec 09A for YouTube or for um, normal broadcasting media instead of Rec 09 2.4 to compensate the tone shift that occurs within the GPUs of Mac. Now, before we go, just a little express tip for you guys that upload your videos just like me into YouTube. Now, it doesn't really matter, guys, if you export in sRGB in 2.4 or Rec. 9A. It looks exactly the same because YouTube processes every single video into the same type of codec or the same type of color space. So as you can see over here, YouTube recommends us to upload our videos into Rec. 9 or into BT601, but it's basically the same. And then it tells us over here in the note that it does not recommend to upload in sRGB and because it will change how it processes the color space. And that's a big lie, guys, because I did the experiment. This is my clip. Uh, this is in sRGB. This is in Rec. 9 2.4. Exposure, color, everything is the same. And this is um, in Rec. 9 A. So it basically looks the same in all of them. YouTube is processing sRGB just like it's processing Rec. 9 So there's no issue there. So if your monitor is 100% sRGB, uh, you can export it just like that and it's going to look the same in YouTube. Now, I do recommend you guys to use color management still. So what you're looking at when you're editing is the same result as when it's uploaded. And just in case, if you're wondering how my video on YouTube compares to the original file, this is the original file over here. And on YouTube, it's basically the same. It just It's the same, it just loses a bit of quality and detail, but it's basically the same color, the same exposure. So that's it for today, guys. If you're interested in more color grading tutorials for video, check the playlist over here or my edit like series videos over here.